A few people asked me to make a tutorial on 3D text. This tutorial is going to contain elements for both basic users, but it also contains some advanced elements for more experienced users. So whatever your experience is with 3D text, you should be able to follow along. Alright, so let's check it out. First of all, open up Cinema 4D, go up to the MoGraph menu, and select Mo Text. Alright, so there's a very general text, and if I go down here to the Object tab, I can customize the text. Here I enter Synaptic Media. And down here in the Object tab, you can adjust all the elements of your text, including the height, the horizontal spacing, and the depth. So the height just makes it bigger and smaller, so the depth gives it more thickness. Click on the Caps tab. Here you can do a fillet cap, and this kind of gives the edges a shape. You can look at the fillet type, you can choose concave, linear. Just go through these different settings and change the number of steps as well as the radius size to achieve the effect you're looking for. Next, let's use a light. Lighting really brings the three-dimensional space to life. This is the Omni light, and Omni stands for omnidirectional, so it sends light in all directions. Here I drag the light to the far left. Now I make another light that is an area light. Area lights are nice for text. They kind of spread the light out a little bit and have a softer, more realistic look. So looking at the light object in the general tab, I can click on the color to change the color. Here I use a soft blue. And for the Omni light, I use a very soft red. I have the Omni light on the far left and the area light far back and raised, so it gives me this light effect. If you want to make your text look really cool, you can add a texture. So what I do is I go up to the Window tab and I select Content Browser. So here I can browse all of the plugins that are built in. But this texture pack you can download from the web. Check the description if you want to download this texture pack. To apply a texture to your text, select the texture and drag it to the MoText object. You may need to take a look at the texture tag properties. Under the tag property, I can pull down the side menu and select different sides. Um, try different sides to get the effect you're looking for. Here I can play around with the offset until I get the texture pattern that I'm looking for. Let's take a look at the render settings. Click the render settings, click the effect tab, and add global illumination. Global illumination is really nice for high quality renders. Here I adjust the settings to low so that it renders faster. In the Output tab, I select HDTV 1080. Manually enter 30 for the frame rate. You can also use 60 here, but 30 is good. Under the Save tab, I use Open EXR. Open EXR works really well with After Effects. It's high quality, it's 32 bits. Although the files are large, they're not too huge. And it supports Alpha, so use Open EXR for your text. And select where you want to save the file, give it a name. So this is a more advanced technique. Let's add a camera. Go to Objects, Scene, and select Camera. Now we can animate this using the camera. In the Object tab, I can adjust some of the camera settings here. Now starting at zero, I add a keyframe. Then I drag the timeline all the way to 90. I move the camera to its final position and apply another keyframe. So basically what's going to happen is the camera is going to start where I apply the first keyframe at the first frame and then the camera is going to move to where I applied the next keyframe. Here if I press F1 on my keyboard I'm looking from the top as I drag the timeline the camera moves from the first keyframe to the second keyframe. So here I go in the middle of the timeline and I place another keyframe in the middle. So now the camera has a smoother motion that kind of bows out in the middle. It's not as smooth as I would like to see it. You can tweak the keyframe settings.
You can drag the keyframe from left to right. Or if you want more control over the keyframe smoothness, you can go to Window, select Timeline. Go to Window, select Timeline. Click that Graph button. You can see the graphical representation of the timeline. So looking at the position, uh, position X, position Y, and position Z, um, you can select all of these positions and adjust the spline curves of the camera movement. So just play with these splines until it looks as smooth as you want it. Alright, so once I have that squared away, let's take a look at the render settings. I'm going to turn off global illumination for this animation because it takes a long time to render. Anti-aliasing increases the quality quite a bit, so I choose best. The filter is animation, and I choose one by one by two by two. Next, let's take a look at the output tab. Make sure that it's 1920 by 1080. Here I choose 30 frames per second. You can also use 60 frames per second if you're going to use time remapping in After Effects. Okay, this is important. Under frame range, select all frames. This animation goes from 0 frames to 90 frames. So here I just select all frames. We previously told it we wanted to export to open EXR and include alpha. Now I render to the picture viewer. Now I click this button to render to the picture viewer. Alright, now the render is complete. Now, in Adobe After Effects, go to File, Import, File, Select the first image in the image sequence you just rendered. Alright, now I go to Interpret Footage, and I make sure that the footage says 30 FPS. And if you render to 60 FPS, then you have to change that number to 60. But here we use 30. So I just want to confirm it still says 30. Now I drag this image sequence into a new composition. I can preview it in After Effects to make sure it looks correct. If I want, I can add a background or other elements into the scene. All these layers here are just some smoke and some fire that I've added to give it more of an environment. Because I rendered this 3D text in open EXR format with an alpha channel, I can overlay the text onto other layers. Alright, that's it for this tutorial. If you found this video helpful and you enjoy the channel, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Good luck and have fun.